Welcome to this care collab. Only two more channels in the West are joining in because I couldn't find anyone else that grows Chromatophyllum outside of Asia. I only have one and it's Gramatophyllum speciosum, the tiger or sugarcane orchid, which also is the largest orchid in the world. Mine is an import from Thailand and it only has been in my collection for 3 months. But anyway, let's see how I care for it and repot it. Its natural habitat has quite a range in South Central Asia. It can be found in Borneo, Java, Malaysia, Myanmar, Indonesia, Sulawesi, Sumatra, Thailand, Laos and Vietnam. But strangely enough, it doesn't seem to be present in Cambodia. This species was also introduced to the Fiji Islands. It can be found high up in rubber trees, but also on plantations with durian trees and it seems to spread and grow quite easily. So in many cases, the orchids are just cut down out of the trees and burned because they are seen as weeds. I inserted here a small clip of the speciosum growing wild in Malaysia and as you will see, local people harvest them to sell at the markets or grow them themselves. I will put a link to the whole video down below in the description. These plants can get very massive with canes growing over 3 meters or 10 feet in length and the flower spikes can get almost as long as the canes. Weirdly, the flowers at the top of the flower spikes have 5 petals and are not fragrant, but these are the fertile ones. The ones at the bottom half only have 4 petals and are sweetly fragrant. The natural color of the flowers is a deep yellow with brown spots. However, my plant is of the Alba variety and should get pure yellow flowers. Since its arrival almost three months ago, my plant has been outside enjoying relatively warm temperatures and getting sun for at least six hours a day. When the weather was dry and sunny outside, I dunked the whole plant for approximately half an hour a day, once or twice a week. So before the repot, I soaked the root ball again to try and see which roots are viable and which aren't. These plants make a lot of aerial roots to form a basket so they can catch falling debris like dead leaves so they can feed themselves. And although this is a small division, it isn't a small plant. So let's see what we will be working with. But first, the hanging hook it came with needs to be removed.
Upon closer inspection, I found that the orchid was put in a small plastic basket and the roots just grew through and around it. So I need to find a way to remove it before I can repot it. Believe me when I say this wasn't an easy job. Those roots are tough as nails and cutting them with scissors was a no-go. So I took out my sterilized pruners and started hacking away. So it won't become boring, I will speed up this process. After removing many of these aerial roots to get the pot off, I found the inside of the root bowl contained only dead and rotten roots and it smelled awful. So I had to remove all this stinking matter. This is the mass I had to chop away, and really most of it is dead and rotting away. It really was a hard root trim, and this is what I'm left with. Looking at Asian videos, this shouldn't be a problem, as they chop the roots down in the same way when they harvest them in nature. The potting mix. I've been looking and searching to see what would be the best medium mix to repot this little giant and I made a mix of charcoal, medium and large bark, pieces of cocoa husk and some large pumice. This mix seems to work fine in Asia so I don't see why it wouldn't work here. And as they do in Thailand I crock the bottom of the pot with some large chunks of charcoal. This also assures good drainage for the new roots when they come. When potting the plant up, I'm trying to save as many upward growing area roots as possible, but I also need to make sure that the plant stands stable in its pot. Because of the length of the canes and the weight of the plant, I have some sticks ready to secure them if necessary. The potting media is pressed down firmly around the roots and the base of the orchid.
and in the end, my little palm tree stands firmly on itself in its new growing environment. And the finished setup. To make sure the plant won't tip over, I put it in a glazed terracotta pot and hopefully in a while it'll start making a new cane and new roots. However, the latest cane the orchid came with is still growing. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and if possible, subscribe to my channel. Anyway, hopefully see you in one of my next videos.